Welcome to Extra Shot live from Windsor at the DSP Leaders World Forum, where I'm delighted to be joined by a very special guest who was on stage Thank actually you. a few minutes ago. It's Diego Lopez. Diego, your senior technology expert at Telefonica and an Etsy fellow as well. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks to you for having me here. So you were on stage, like I've said, to discuss network automation. So could you maybe share the key uh, takeaways, actually the, the key messaging you were sharing on, with the audience today? Basically, have been two. One is that automation has been around for a long, long time. We have been applying some degrees of automation since network started. And, uh, but the important thing right now is that uh, we have the possibility of doing smart, or smarter automation. That we, 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 we may uh, use something that is able to adapt uh, to the uh, changes, etc. And that for this, what we need is a, a continuous and trustworthy flow of data. And this is uh, maintaining those flows of data and guaranteeing those data are useful is uh, the key for, uh, for, for making automation realize its uh, potential. Data management is important, but it's also very challenging, isn't it? You've got security issues, you've got storage issues, you've got use issue, and of course we are overflowing with data, aren't we? Definitely. And with the eyes, it's only going to get worse. So how do we go about managing data efficiently for network automation? What we're trying to do is uh, to uh, build uh, <coughs> what they call uh, data, data infrastructures, is uh, mechanisms to, uh, to take advantage of the distributed nature of the, uh, of the networks so the data can, can be uh, made available where and when they are required and be processed. Because the, the, the point that what is important is not about the raw data by itself, is important, but what's important is the features and the characteristics of the, the knowledge that you can derive from it. And this is how we can move data around so we can take advantage of the knowledge that is associated with it. And Diego, of course, this year at the forum, we've had many conversations around, around AI because there's been a step change with Gen AI in particular. How much of a game changer is it when it comes to network automation? Well, uh, no, it's, a, it's, a, it's essential. We were discussing during the, uh, the session about the idea of uh, how we were trying to identify early symptoms of, uh, of um, disruptions in the network. And we're relying very much on AI. The same way, the same way, I use very, very often the same example, the same way that we rely, for example, on dogs to detect things that we cannot detect because our senses are not well trained for that or are not suited for detecting this, is, is the same way is that relying on, on, on these uh, additional tools that we are, we are starting to have to detect those conditions that are related to uh, disruptions and detect them before they, uh, they, they have a serious impact. And of course, one of the greatest fears related to AI is the possibility that it could replace humans. So uh, what yes. place remains for human operatives in the, uh, well, in network operations? I mean, will they play any role at all? Would they be augmented by AI? Would they be replaced by AI? What's your take on it? I, I believe that it's, uh, it's going to be uh, another tool, a powerful tool, but the tool that would require humans to be, to be around. Think about one thing, and, and this is something I insist very much when talking about co with colleagues about this. An AI is a system that we program. It's, it's no more than a computer program, but the difference is that we are programming it in a different way. We are, we are, we are training it. We say we are training it, but we are doing is feeding data to make it behave in a, in a particular way. And this is basically just programming. We have, it's like when you, when, when I was young, uh, we, we tend to use assembler, that it was a very, very primitive language. Then we use C, and then we had to learn Java, and then we had to learn Python. And right now we will have to learn prompting or whatever they call it to train the AI. And finally, Diego, to wrap up our conversation, um, before we move on to the last session of the day, I was wondering if you could maybe share your thoughts on where the sector is at currently? What's the state of play? What would you say are the, the, the key challenges and maybe opportunities? For the, uh, in general, for the sector, I, I would say that it's about embracing all the possibilities that the, uh, what, well, at least in my team, we, we commonly refer to this as network transformation, something that started probably 10, 12 years ago with the advent of SDN, network virtualization and all the like, is to, to find the, uh, all the, uh, the full possibilities that this is offered to make the network something that is much more flexible and much more able to adapt to the needs of, the, uh, of their users and the, well, in general, society. So you sound 
enthusiastic and optimistic, actually. I'm always, always. always. I, mean, <laughs> I do believe in, in humankind. It's really. a way of being, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Diego. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with Same us you. on thank Extra you. Shot. We are back in one hour to give you more thoughts on the floor here at DSP Leaders World Forum, live from Windsor. Thank you.